good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming down. It's uh, 6.30. Today is the uh, Thursday, August 23rd public safety meeting. Uh, I accept a motion to take item one off the table. So moved. Thank you. Uh, item one uh, is an order from Rebecca Lisi that the Hoyle Police Department provide accident reports for the past five years for the corner of Hamden and Northampton Street and that they be evaluated by the city engineer to see if traffic changes are needed in the area. Anybody that's going to speak to it, they can either stay outside, come inside, you just got to do it on a microphone, whatever, whatever your, your pleasure is. <clears throat> I love when you do this, Mike. Any order you guys want to go in is fine with me, or us. Uh, so I guess we, we can start uh, with this Bob Parent, the uh, city engineer, um, in case you haven't met. Hi. Hello. This Bob? Bob, oh, that's good. Yep. Thanks. Uh, so we did get a summary of the crashes at this intersection. They're attached to uh to this we haven't really dug into it too much as to uh, an evaluation to see if traffic changes are needed in the area uh, but uh, you know a cursory review uh, indicated a lot of the accidents were rear endings briefly i can talk to that what i did was i take took all the accident reports i put them together in a spreadsheet there were 46 accidents i believe from 2013 through current date in 2018 Typically, most years about the same number of accidents, although 2017, for some strange reason, was a real bad year um, compared to others. If you look in four or five sheets at the bottom of the big table, I summarized categories, um, and that's what Mike had referred to, that if you take a look at rear-end collisions where, where you've got traffic stopped at the, at the light, and somebody bumps into the guy in front of them, that's by far the biggest category of accidents there. And then you have other categories where you have um, traffic coming at 90 degrees and one of the vehicles fails to stop at a stop light or at a red light and they go through the intersection and create an accident. Um, and then similar type of thing is when you've got two vehicles going north to south from opposite directions and the turning vehicle is supposed to yield and doesn't yield, that has created a significant number of the accidents as well. Uh, this, this traffic signal is one of the 11 signals that we're going to replace uh, that's in the, the bond that should be before city council, the bond request for funds to uh, replace the signal hardware. Now what that, that would do is it would update the equipment, uh, be less prone to failure, uh, to going out of service. Uh, it would also, it would also provide some uh, uh, pedestrian phase signaling as well. Now, uh, years ago, you used to be able to take a right on red. There, were you here when they changed that? No. Okay. Of that bill, if you could initiated that, whatever, because it was before be, your yeah. time. Okay. Chief thoughts? Um, no, I, I just look at I just have to look at this in depth. But, but, um, I looked at 46 in over five years and looked at nine and a half hours of years. It just doesn't break the alarm bells. Okay. I think most of them were very, very minor, like nine. Yeah, sorry, I just turned the microphone on, so <laughs> I'll, I'll say it again. Um, yeah, uh, looking at 46 accidents at that intersection, which is a, a major intersection over five years, you look at nine and a half a year averaging, it, it doesn't raise alarm bells for me. Most of them were minor, um, but uh, I definitely will take a better look at this uh, way more in-depth in report. Do you, do you, does anyone have an opinion that this, were any accidents related to someone looking for money, perhaps, on that corner, panhandling it all? Just out of curiosity. I, I couldn't tell you. Okay. The, the hearsay that I've heard really is that perhaps some people tend to stay out of the left lane when they should be in the left lane. Right. And that might cause a little bit of weaving. But that 
as you look at the table, there were five accidents caused by somebody trying to turn from the wrong lane. So perhaps that might have contributed to some of them, but it's a fairly small number. So what the maker of the order is in here. So is, there, is this, the, the police department is telling me that it doesn't raise an alarm. Does it raise an alarm to the engineer, or to you, Mike, that a, a, a deeper study needs to be conducted? Or do we think, you know, if you think about how major of an intersection that is, I mean, I'm not okay with, I'm not asking you okay with 46 accidents over five years, but in your expertise, do you think we need to reevaluate this intersection, or is it just, it's, it's just because it's a very busy intersection, it is what it is? I think to reinforce what the chief said, looking at all the accident <clears throat> reports, the vast majority of them were very minor accidents, no injuries. Most times the vehicles drove, drove away after the accident. Putting it in perspective, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has put together a tabulation of the top 100 high crash intersection, intersections in the Pioneer Valley region. That intersection ranks number 89 out of 100. So it is on the list, but it's pretty low on the list. And then if you take a look at all of the Holyoke intersections that are on that list, there are 12 Holyoke intersections on that list, and it ranks number 11 out of 12 on that list. So that reinforces that, you know, other accidents, sure, there's a lot of traffic through there that tends to create the potential for accidents, but um, it's by no means um, one of the higher ranked intersections in the city. So the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission did a study of the top 100 dangerous intersections in the Pioneer Valley. Correct. The one we're talking about was number nine. There was 12 in total from Holyoke. Yes. And it was 11 out of the 12. That's correct. Okay. Is there any way you could send me that? Certainly. Great. Yeah, it's a, it's that. a electronic document, so I'll forward it to you. Beautiful. I appreciate it. Actually, I would like that also. <laughs> okay. So a motion that the order has been complied with? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Gentlemen, thank you. Appreciate you coming down. Do you have my email address or you know who I, you know, you if can, I don't, Mike, Mike can certainly provide it. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thanks. Chief, appreciate it. Yeah, Dave, nice seeing you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll go in order. Yeah, why not? A uh, motion to take item two off the table. Removed. Uh, order from Juan Anderson Burgos, order that the City Council re request a st bead study be conducted on Columbus Ave to address a speeding issue expressed by multiple constituents. Uh, so I, I looked in the history of speed studies that we've done and we have not done one on Columbus Avenue. Uh, we're currently doing one on Dwight and Ray Street. So once that one's done, we can redeploy our uh, traffic counter to Columbus Avenue to do a, a study. Okay. Um, so I'd request that you table this for the time being. No. No. Motion to table. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to take item three off the table. <clears throat> item three is an order by Juan Anderson Burgos as well, that the city council request a speed study be conducted on Hillside Avenue to address speeding concerns. Um, expressed by multiple constituents as well. So we did a, a speed study on Hillside in June of 2017. Uh, this study showed that the 85th percentile of the speed was 30 miles per hour, which is the speed limit of Hillside. Uh, so our, our recommendation uh, would, would be that traffic calming measures aren't warranted. Are not? Are not. And Mike, when was that study done? That was done in June of 2017. It, it was done in response to a, an order filed by Howie Graney. Oh, yeah, I'm going to waste on the time. It's okay. Thank you. Okay, so uh, accept the motion that this order has been complied with as well. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> motion to take item four off the table. Uh, so moved. Item four is an order that the DPW Parks and Rec report, report back to public safety on the status and of the review of all the parks in the city. Terry, yeah. Terry, come on down. So we had done a, uh, um, a review of all the parks back in March 
uh, late April. And we sent a correspondence to okay. City Council on March 1st. Um, and that, uh, a copy of that is included with, with your handouts here. Uh, and what, what we did was we talked about the, uh, uh, the parks improvements projects, which included the McKenzie Field construction, uh, the Roberts, um, uh, the football field, the tennis court project, Pooley Up Pool, uh, Valley Arena, and then our playground, uh, the, the various city playgrounds and assessment of those playgrounds. Um, we should update that Excuse because me. it's been a couple months um, since then, <clears throat> and uh, there are updates to all of those projects. Uh, and we can provide an update in the form of, of another correspondence to the city council before your next meeting. Um, but specifically for city parks, um, we, we have encumbered uh, some money in a purchase order to uh, buy wood chips for, for various city parks. Um, and we should take delivery of those in the next few weeks. And we're also working with a, uh, uh, the playground equipment manufacturer for the Kennedy Park and the Rowan Park to uh, get a price and a, a PO for replacement park equipment. Um, this is where you know, swings are missing, mm -hmm. but also uh, larger playground components are missing from those two parks, and they're two larger parks, and mm -hmm. um, uh, will replace in kind the components that are missing well, using uh, city funds. We might have a hard time finding replacement parks just because of the rage. So that's, that's been a lot of the delay in the beginning. Right. I think, yeah, they both were installed around 2000. So, if we can't find an exact replica of, of what was there originally, yeah. we can find something to put in the, the place. Councilor Bartley. Yeah, Mike, how are the tennis courts coming along? Uh, the tennis courts are coming along well. Uh, the Jones Point court is, is farther along. They were delayed a little while with the surface coating because of weather. Um, but I, the, the Crozier and the high school courts have been placed. The concrete has been placed. Mm -hmm. uh, both have been post-tensioned. Uh, and Crozier should get a coat of paint relatively soon and then the high school will be another month or so out before the paint goes up. Uh, at Crozier they're working on the electrical for the lights. I know the fence is up at Jones Point um, but we should be setting a date for when we're opening up Jones Point relatively soon. And when, when will you open the high school and Th those will follow afterwards. Um, I'd say Crozier is probably a month plus out and the high school a little bit more. And then uh, what, what's the status of, of the pool? Uh, pool, yeah, pool, it's currently in design. Uh, right now we've uh, been working with AECOM to uh, come up with a, a design that meets the city's needs. And we're in the preliminary stages of that. Do you want to add anything to it? No. The tennis courts, one of the neighbors just called this afternoon. They um, started putting down the, they're going to look beautiful, purple on the outside, and they started putting the green on the inside. So you'll at least see what the finished product looks like. I think now, I don't know how far they got painting the surface green and purple. All three locations are going to be green and purple. Yeah. Like one side's green, one side's purple, one side's green. Green on the inside the court. Yeah. And then the perimeter is dark purple. So at all three locations. So it'll look very nice. And, and to follow up on that, uh, I don't know if anybody's heard of pickleball. Mm -hmm. um, it's apparently all the rage yeah, it is. out in uh, eastern Massachusetts and, and other locations. Uh, but we're going to stripe uh, a few courts for a pickleball court. A pickleball is essentially um, um, ping pong on a tennis court 
with a wiffle ball. Mm -hmm. and the it's tennis it's very, very popular in the South, and it's moved up the East Coast. It's mostly seniors. A large, a large uh, paddle. Yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, I think there's a pickleball court in Agawam. Is that where it is? And uh, people from the area go to this court specifically mm -hmm. to play pickleball. Yeah. Yeah, it's very popular at the Cape and in Enfield. You'll, you'll hear more about it in years to come. It's, it looks fun. Will they, do you think they will freeze the courts like they did a couple years ago? Or is that, that was just because it was falling apart? Freeze and for guys, skating? Yeah. John Tuig has tried to have skating there for I'm years. Sorry? John Tuig has tried to have skating at, at Crozier Field, even Mayor Field. Because um, the path is nice, but it's just not wide enough for people that like to skate. I know. The weather has not been cooperative, even for the refrigerated ice skating path. Right. Um, it's either very warm and we have slush, or it's bitter cold. Um, so I think he plans on trying. Well, we, we had asked the designer if we could yeah. turn the tennis courts into a skating rink in the winter, and they yeah. advised against it because of the grades, that the, the way it's set up, uh, because this tennis court is kind of built on the old tennis court, mm -hmm. uh, that the grading, you would need to have uh, uh, really high walls in order to flood it for the ice. Will those posts come out that hold the tennis uh, court nets, or are they permanent? <coughs> I believe they should come out. I think there's a sleeve that was installed for the posts. Right. Council Barber? Yeah, I mean, it was so cold last January. Yeah. I can't believe that, that <laughs> you couldn't, we couldn't have ice rinks at that point, but it was. And I, I can tell you, since the path opened in 2013, I think we've only had two really good winters where it was used. Yeah, well, last we've January. We've had grass growing right through Christmas, so we've we never used next it week, then. But it was yeah. unbelievable. Uh, Mike and, and Terry, uh, on the dog park, I raised this with Terry, mm -hmm. so um, can we consider having a, a separate, uh, uh, this is at Community Field, so I, I've had a couple of people reach out to me about this, uh, s segregating the, the larger and the smaller um, canines, and I also, I, I forwarded something to Terry as well about an ad hoc group mm -hmm. that wanted to work on community field I mean I, and I think we all appreciate volunteerism but I, I think there, there ought to be a process and procedure but I never I forwarded that to you yep but I never heard I never heard the, the results if you reached out to the to the to the person so th those are two things I just want to mention well, I want to get your feedback I don't know on. I don't know counselor if I've reached out to that person I think so but I can tell you that a woman was just hired about a month ago um, her title is dog park liaison Okay. Ultimately, I think we'd like to start a Friends of Dog group because we have many constituents calling about the condition of the dog park and what they'd like to see. And so she's on board. She's hired. Um, she's going to start with a few fall events and gradually build into making her group or a Friends of group. Wonderful. Yeah, the first event actually I thought was pretty fabulous. Her name is Danielle Pickle. Uh, the first event I know is going to be on October 20th at the dog park. It's a costume party for dogs. So we'll start from there, and we'll get input from residents. And I know people want better wood chips, separate areas, and a water source. Um, and I also know that there are so many people who care about the dog park, they would be more than happy to do some work and raise the funds. So the and process why would, has started. Why don't they raise funds? What, what, what's the balance of the community field revolving account? Do we have any... I mean, is it around 80, 80, 85,000? Oh, no. I know that. That, that oh. runs through Park and Rec. Okay. Um, no. no. Right no. now, I think the balance is about 20,000. 20,000? Mm hmm How'd that happen? I thought it was a lot high. It was pretty high. I can tell you that all the utilities come out. Of, I think most of the expenses come out of that account, utilities, and the refrigerated ice path is very high. And it's also staffed year-round with part-time people through my office. And that's taken a chunk out of it too. But there, there so there, there are user fees. Yep. And there's the revenue you're getting from the, the cell phone tower. Yes, monthly, about three thousand dollars a month. As a matter of fact, I was in front of uh, a different the finance committee. In June, 
And they'd requested a, a printout of, there's three revolving funds in the department. So you'll be seeing all the expenditures probably in September. Okay, well, I mean, I, I just want to, I want us to be careful with that as well. I mean, if you had an account for $80,000, which is what I remember the last time I heard two years ago, and now you're at $20,000. Yep. Um, does that, is that not concerning? No, Counselor, because it's, we use it as our operating fund. When the account was turned over to Park and Rec in 2013, um, the balance was there because no money had been spent. I can tell you a good chunk of it. Every year there's a $15,000 maintenance fee for the refrigerated ice skating path. That takes a big chunk out of it. And like I said, it is staffed year-round with part-time help, and that takes a bigger chunk. And during the winter months, the electric bill for the refrigerated ice skating path is $3,000. And then in the, the summer, you have the uh, splash pad yes. as well. Okay, so it's nice to be to have this be self-supporting, and mm -hmm. you, you'd want to make sure it continues. So you, you've got to mm -hmm. really stay on point on, mm -hmm. on that as well. So I, I, I'm sure you are, but okay, that's... Mm -hmm. Okay, that's at least I... It hasn't I know. been frivolous. Um, I will be gladly happy to show you the income and the, the outcome. I'm sure it hasn't been frivolous. Yeah, no one's implying that, and I know you. I know you know. I know I'm not saying that, but it's nevertheless when I hear hear it's an account was at one number, and now it's a, mm -hmm. a fraction of that number, then then to me it, it just raises. Well, a, like I said, that yeah. that is how we operate, and right. when the balance was very high, there was no nobody was using the account, so it was turned over to us very high. No, Roger that. I, okay. I heard that part. Okay. Now. So I, I as I'm saying now now I'm hearing for the first time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just raising my concerns about I, I, I wanted to make sure it was self-supporting to the extent we, that we can make it. So mm -hmm. let's just be as prudent as we can. Mm -hmm. My only point. Thank you. And you, you, but you did say that you already talked about this in finance, and there's going to be some reports mm -hmm. that are going to explain all that to mm -hmm. us coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. And Mike, you're going to get us an, an updated uh, park and rec um, facilities yeah. update before the next council meeting. Before the September. You sure? Is that enough time? Yeah, that's okay. enough time. All right. I'm going to say it's complied with. Yeah. Okay. Motion that the order has been complied with. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Motion to take up item five. So moved. Item five is that the DPW and the Alarm Division report back to public safety with an update on the traffic lights throughout the city. So uh, Joe's here from the Alarm Division, but I'll, I'll start off by saying that we did put forward a bond request uh, for money to upgrade 11 of the traffic signals in the city. Uh, and then there's also a TIP project that's ongoing, the High and Maple Street uh, project, uh, which would replace another 15 signals in the city uh, through uh, through state money, uh, and that's uh, on the 2020 tip. Um, and then uh, there's one other signal. Uh, Main and Appleton Street. Yeah. It's, it'll be part of the Kelly School project to upgrade the uh, facility, the uh, sidewalks in that area and the uh, traffic intersection. And the state's paying for that. State, that's uh, coming out of the state. And, and can you just, what intersection is that again? Main and Appleton. Main and, Main and Appleton. So Main and Appleton, the state's going to get paid for, and then High and Maple. High and Maple, the 15 signals on High and Maple. Are being done by what? Uh, it's through a TIP project, a transportation improvement project, but that's funded through the state, the state and federal dollars. We don't have to pay any of that money back. Uh, no. So we're only going to be out of pocket the 11 upgrades that we're getting the bond for. Correct. So in total, we're looking at 26 without Maine and Appleton, 26 lights within, and in, in what kind of time frame? Because I'm saying in the next four years. The next four years. Yeah, provided provided you guys approve the bond. But even if we don't approve the bond, the one on for the 15 for High and Maple are going through anyways with the tip. They'll be going through on the tip, and uh, the Maine and Appleton is being funded by the state.
plus the five intersections by the mall, they're being upgraded also by the state. And that's that's currently happening. Is that uh, on the up ramp to 91 coming from like yeah. uh, Lyon Fitzpatrick? Below Westfield Road from Weddings Farm Road to Homestead Avenue, Barnes and Noble intersection in the CVS intersection. That's the state as well? That's correct. So, from the alarm provision perspective, we were, we were kind of in a dire, dire strait a few years ago when it was going to be like a million dollars to do 10 lights. It sounds like we're, we're on the mend or we're going to be headed in the right direction. And is there any concerns that we should know about? Uh, yes, the uh, $1.4 million that's in finance right now, yep. the 11 intersections, they are, they are needed throughout the city. Now, those 11 intersections, are those the one he's talking about he's going to ask a bond to fix? That's correct. Okay, and you're saying there's $1.4 million somewhere that you can, we could do it without the bond? No, no, no. no. That's, no. that's the value of the bond. That's the value of the bond. That's what we're asking for. Okay, and when is that coming up? When, when is it going to be before us? It, it should have been submitted to the last city council meeting uh, and referred to finance. I have a question. Yeah, some, some time ago, I think you gave a report uh, several years ago regarding that the company that we were using to do some of the repairs um, or getting the parts for some of these lights was not was only one company or something like that back at... Um, That's correct. For the lights it, on, basically the lights on High Street and Maple Street, we're getting the parts from a company from Texas. Uh, uh, is, has there been any progress on that situation? That is only, I mean, have we been able to identify another company in the country or? Uh, no, uh, they, all they make is a component to the cabinet. They don't make the whole cabinet. They just make a component that goes into the cabinet. That was the component, component that would fail. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of old parts in these cabinets mm -hmm. that fail. Uh, mm -hmm. And unfortunately we're running out of mm -hmm. parts for it. Yeah, the reason I bring it up because I continue to see over and over the the the, the um, uh, lights not functioning in certain areas, in particular the lower wards, because so, oh, they may be as old as you mentioned that they're old. So, curious about where we're at. Thank you. Okay, so basically, we're getting a bunch of lights from the state, and then we got we got to approve a bond to get the other ones that you were referred to two or three years ago. We got to get. Motion that uh, item five has been complied with. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to take item six, which we kind of have covered, but. Well, I might as well just read it and then yeah. we can, if there's any other. So, order that the fire department through the alarm division give the Honorable Hoyoke City Council a report on which fire alarm boxes are working, which are not. And for those that are not functioning, please let us know what the plan is, either fixing or removing. There's a fire alarm in the traffic. So I guess the, the fire alarm, the pole stations, right? Fire That's correct. There are three boxes that are not working right now. They are on uh, Cedar Hill Road, Northampton Street and Sargent, and Northampton and Shawman Avenue. Uh, we are currently trying to fix them. It's the wire that has gone bad in that area. So we're trying to fix them. If we can't fix them, we'll take them all in a timely fashion. How many Joe are throughout the city? Do you know? We have roughly Upper. about 50 street boxes. 149 master boxes and about 150 radio boxes. Okay, so why don't you, can you just briefly tell me what's, what, what, what's, the, what's the master box and what's the 150? Street box is typically on a street corner yep. that you see that you can pull uh, if you need help. A master box is associated with the building. Like the city hall here has a master box. So if a smoke detector went off, a sprinkler went off, she would notify the fire department immediately. A radio box is something, new technology. A lot of companies have gone to it to upgrade, they've upgraded the fire alarm system. So it's, it's a radio wave instead of going through the copper wire, like a master box or a street box would. Those street boxes, do they, do they, do they have a film on them so when you hit them you get a mark on your hand or something? Some of them do, yes. Yeah. Problem, the ones that are problematic, we do uh, put a, uh, a film on it. It's, called, it's like a greasy paste. Yeah. Are we ha is there a lot of stations being pulled that are just jokes? Uh, there's a couple. It depends. Like summertime, you get more than you would winter time, but not really. 
So when you say um, that you're working on repairing them, I mean, do you have kind of a timeline just so that we can figure out if we should table this or? Uh, usually 30 days after they fail, mm -hmm. uh, we usually take them offline. Okay. It's talking about the street boxes. The street boxes, that's correct. And how do you know they're not working? Is there some sort of- We system? test them. Oh, you test they them? They test them, or if a wire goes bad, we're notified right away. can't fix it after 30 days and not work and you just take it down. That's correct. Okay. I'll say it's complied with. Okay. Motion that the order has been complied with. Second. Aye. Aye. Motion to take item seven off the table. Yep, that's it. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yes. Uh, this is an order from Councillor Todd McGee, order that the DPW and Marcos Murrow come down before the Public Safety Committee to address the permitting and safety matters associated with art in the park <coughs> on the corner of Lincoln and Northampton Street. I, I did get an email from Marcos saying he couldn't make it. Um, um, that's fine. I, I say that just as informational purposes. Um, and I did get an email from him that I could read. I have the Mike, do you have it? I have oh, it. Oh, perfect. Great. Thank you, Mike. Well, you're, you're on point, kid. Dave, you want one of these? Well. Uh, it's the art in the park. Oh, art in the park. Oh, art in the park. Okay, thank you. Does anybody want me to read this out loud? Or do you want to just maybe just touch upon the order and then we can? Uh, so the, uh, the art, it's, uh, it's installed in the, the corner of Linden and Northampton Street. Um, it, it had gone through the, the application process once uh, with the, the Holyoke Local Cultural Council it was approved and installed. Um, it was for a period of, uh, of two years. Uh, that time is, has come up and the artist has reapplied uh, to the, uh, the council to keep the piece of art on loan to the city of Holyoke. Um, that you know, application has been approved and accepted again uh, by the council. Uh, and the, the condition is that the artist comes and um, you know resecures the existing artwork to make sure it's stable, and also replace the uh, one piece of the artwork which had uh, had fallen um, had fallen recently. Uh, when it fell, it was taken away uh, by the artist as, and is in storage. So uh, the artist isn't able to come back and do that work until October. Uh, but he is aware uh, that it needs to be done. Um, as far as a, a safety concern, you know, the art is, uh, it's not within the, the sidewalk area. So if something were to fall further, it wouldn't fall on somebody on the sidewalk. Um, I, I don't think that it's in imminent danger of falling. Is there any clause in the permit application that indemnifies the city if it did fall on somebody walking their dog or going to the bus stop to cross the street or any, you know, worst yeah, case scenario? I, I can't answer that question. Okay. And it's the Holyoke Local Cultural, Cultural Council, Council, correct? That is, it's, does, is there a permit fee? I, I can't answer that okay. question either. Okay. It used to be that, uh, Council used to be part of the, the Office of Planning and Economic Development, but it's it's no longer part of that office. It's its own standalone group. So, in, is he like out of state that he can't address the safety issue till October? It's out of I believe the country. out of the country. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I said it's out of the country. Now, 
if it was in, if it was if it was a serious issue, I'm, I'm assuming the city would step in and, and secure it or put barriers around it. So, Absolutely. you know, if he's out of the country and it, it gets hit by lightning and it's. Yeah, okay. we would. Okay. Yeah, I mean, these two structures are on a pretty big piece of grassy area. Mm -hmm. Even if they both fell, they wouldn't damage anyone or any property, really. But. I think, I'm, I mean, the author of the order, the maker of the order is not here, but maybe it was more of an update of how long is this gonna be there? And I think the answer to that is here in terms of the um, exhibit being approved for a renewal um, for a two year, two year renewal. So um, I would say that it's been complied with Absolutely. based on that. I just have one more. Yeah, one, go ahead. Not, not, not really. Now, did we install them or did, did he? He did. He installed them. Okay. Installed and them. how about um? And when and when the piece fell, he took it away. Okay. And can can and I don't. I'm just asking to ask. I'm not asking because I got a dog in this fight at all. Believe me. But is can you just keep every two years just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it? Or is there is there after 20 years we're not we can't renew it this time or it does it? I'm not sure. I don't okay. know if there's a. Um, That's fine. Yeah. Thanks. I was just curious. I just I'm I'm, I'm just curious. I know this is all relatively new, and this was the first renewal of public art, so I think it's a work in progress as far as long term. Now, do we have other public art of that nature? Well, I mean, I know we have, there's been that, that... Well, not on park property. You might know. Uh, the other public art is, uh, um, there's some pieces at Wisteria Hearst, mm -hmm. and also on the Canal Walk, there's some public art. Mm. I think thinking? that's it. Can I? Yeah, of course. The basketballs that are around in the city that I see one by Gary Rome, is that part of the public arts? The volleyball? Is it the no. one, the, the, what volleyball? is it? Is the volleyball? Yeah, the ball, yeah, the volleyball that, that is. It was a, um, something with like the Chamber of Commerce. I it, it was yeah, run it was. through the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Uh, and uh, certain patrons would buy a volleyball and it would be painted uh, to, uh, how they wanted or. Um, mm. Okay. But it, that's not Part that's not run card. through this. It's not the okay. same process. As this. Okay. Murals don't fall into this category then either, do they? No. Okay. Just getting just curious. Yeah. Okay. Motion that the order has been complied with. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion take item eight off the table. So moves. Item eight is from Councillor Bartley. Order that the DPW superintendent and city engineer look at making the top of Hitchcock Street where it merges with Westfield Road safer. This would include possibly limiting parking on the south side of Hitchcock and eliminating or moving the PVTA P -V bus stop as well as trimming or ordering the removal of hedges at 97 Hitchcock Street to allow for better visibility. <coughs> start okay uh, so we're, we're just digging into uh, the Hitchcock and Westfield Road intersection um, you know certainly there is sight distance issues when you're at the end of Hitchcock trying to take a, a left-hand turn on the Westfield Road uh, it's due to geometry it's due to the vegetation the vegetation is located on private property um, since uh, 2014 there's been three accidents at this intersection, um, but we haven't really gotten into the you know the cause of the accidents. Uh, in 2015, we did a traffic study, a speed study of Hitchcock, uh, where the traffic counter was at the intersection of Hitchcock and Martin Street. Uh, that speed study showed that the 85th percentile for speed was 31 miles per hour. Uh, which which is in line with the speed limit of the road. Uh, one thing that was interesting is that there were 1,500 trips per day recorded uh, going away from Westfield Road and 3,000 trips per day going towards Westfield Road. Oh no, I've got that backwards. So coming from Westfield Road, there were about 3,000 trips per day. Going towards Westfield Road, there was 1,500 trips to, per day. Uh, which kind of shows that um, people are using that as a, a way to uh, bypass either the Hillside Avenue area or the, the light 
at Westfield Road and Northampton Street. Um, but we, we haven't really gotten into looking into the engineering of that intersection or that corridor to see if there are improvements that can be made uh, to increase the safety at Hitchcock and, uh, and Westfield Road. Clearly the biggest the issue there is sight distance, you know, as you pull up to the end of the intersection and it's certainly worse on the right hand side and the bushes get in the way a little bit and they may encroach within the right of way a little bit, but there's a fairly mature tree that sits right at the point of property there that's really the, the biggest issue that, that exists on private property as well as um, some of the other improvements on private property. On the left hand side, there's also a retaining wall that does obstruct line of sight somewhat as well. Um, I did, being new to the city, I did take a look at the City of Code of Ordinances. Um, some communities might allow the legislative body to direct um, private property owners to remove obstructions within private property. I don't believe that that right exists within the, ci the City Council's um, purview, you know, to require anything to be cut down that's on private property at this point. Um, you are prevented from putting anything within the right-of-way, having flags in the right-of-way, having signs in the right-of-way. Those types of things can be ordered to be removed, but not, um, not vegetation that might exist on private property from what I can read within the City Council um, authority. And, and certainly you can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong there. Yeah, I, well, I'll just raise my hand. So, okay, so. Go ahead. The, right, you're so. Make so, yeah, I, I, certainly a city can take property by eminent domain. So that would take care of that part. So okay. the city has a right to take property right. by eminent domain. That's, we, we don't ever want to do that. Uh, at least I don't ever want to do that. Um, but in, in this case, I, I've, I actually I contacted the private owner. There, it's a, there are a couple from Ludlow. I wrote them a letter. Um, there's, there was prior to the filing this order, um, they, they didn't bother replying. Mm -hmm. So then I filed the order in the hope that you would have provided some input either, either as opposed to, you know, we'll get to it later. But right now I can see we haven't gotten to it. So um, we're, we're probably going to table this uh, for now because we don't have any, uh, yeah, the, 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 the traffic study at Martin Street is not relevant to this. The order spe specifically at the top of Hitchcock Street relative to the sight lines I, I, I don't want to speak to the mature tree but I, I think those hedges I think if they were severely cut back or removed that would probably I think that would tackle a large part of the issue Bob okay um, I, I don't think the retaining wall really does anything the PBTA stop I don't even think that that's online anymore uh, and if it's used, it is so infrequent as to not be useful. So, so it's my, my intention to follow in order to, to just have that remove. I don't know if that's, it, it's got to be an ordinance because it, but PBTA has been known to just put them up when they feel like it, um, despite the fact that they, they know it's, a, it's an ordinance requirement, but they've, they've done it before. So they, they, this, this has been up for a long time. Uh, but I, at that particular intersection to have a PBTA bus stop the truth. I, yeah, I don't even know if a PBTA bus travels on Westfield Road. I can't picture it traveling on, on Westfield Road. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen one, or if I have, I, I haven't seen one in a long time. So I, I, don't, I don't think there's a need for the PBTA stop. So I'll, I'll file a separate order for them. We'll, we'll take that up in ordinance just to clean that up. But that's small potatoes compared to the sight line. Right. I'm glad to know there are three accidents there. Um, I, I distinctly recall one because it was a pretty violent accident. In fact, it resulted in a death. Um, and a, uh, uh, so that was you know pretty, and that was right around that that bend because there's a, there's a speed factor and it's a pretty tight corner to take. I, I don't know what the circumstances were if somebody's pulling out, but but I think experience shows that when you travel west on. Hitchcock Street to that stop sign, it's, it's, it's hard to see and, and you have to pull out pretty far to, to make, that, make that turn. So I'd really like to have you come back when, once this committee tables this, when Dan takes it back up again at some time, when the committee meets in a month or two, I'd really like to have a, 
uh, recommendations on, on, on what, what can be done. So we know we can do eminent domain. If there are other communities that allow a city council to require a private property owner to cut back property based upon public safety issues, if we don't have that in ordinance, that would be something I'd like to have us consider, but I would ask, ask you to maybe maybe look at another community. Uh, I, I can certainly think of one at the bottom of West Glen Street where it's very difficult to, to see the southbound traffic on Northampton Street coming when you when you exit that, that roadway. And I, I wouldn't, and because it's hedges. I mean, they're just, they really block the view, and if you don't pull out far enough, you, you can't see. And it's, I, I think there's a public safety element to those two intersections. The, the Hitchcock Street is, to my knowledge, that's why I filed the order, it's just really not a, it's not a safe intersection. And I, I, whether there's empirical data or not, I don't know, but I mean, certainly, certainly experience shows me that if you can't, if you don't pull yourself out there uh, uh, quite a ways, you're really into the oncoming traffic until you can safely exit. So anyhow, that would be great. So we could just get, get a little more data on that or in your thoughts. Um, if you could, Counselor, if you could share the contact information you had for the property owner. Um, what I've found sometimes yeah. is just a friendly visit, face-to-face -face discussion. Sometimes we'll, we'll you know, have some. So I'm, I'm definitely willing to follow up on that and, and try to arrange that discussion. Oh, I, I, sure. If, if, they'll, if they'll circle back for, for, to you with, a, if you send them a letter, and I sent it on my letterhead, yeah. but I'll, I'll, I'll forward to you the letter I sent to them. Right. Sometimes I find the face-to-face -face discussion goes. You know, you get a letter. It's easy to throw the letter out. It's a little more difficult to. Well, they live in Ludlow. Right. I'll go to Ludlow if I need to at that point okay. to, to meet you with make, them. You want to make an appointment? Great. Sure. Okay. Uh, motion that the item be tabled. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to take item 9 off the table. So moved. In favor? Aye. Aye. 23rd. Uh, order introduced by Councilor Josie Valentin that the DPW give an update regarding the proposed crosswalk on Hamden Street across from Stop and Shop. The City Council voted to approve this order last year. So this crosswalk was included in an application to uh, DOT with the Complete Streets um, for this year's construction work, which, and it was approved. Uh, so we have the money to do it. We're in the process now of signing all the paperwork with the state, and then we'll be going out to bid uh, to have uh, this crosswalk, um, have the, the rapid flashing beacons um, installed, uh, and then uh, there's there's several other crosswalks in the city where uh, these will be installed. But it um, so we'll we'll be bidding the project this summer, and then it it should be built within the next six months or so. Before the winter. Hopefully before the winter, it would be nice. But we have the money. It's moving forward. And that was the thing we were trying to find was the money to actually do it. So at least we'd, we've passed that hurdle. When you say found the money, in your in the DPW area? No, it's from the state. State, okay. Yeah. So, and it's just that they're going to give it to us? It's uh, the Complete Streets program. So uh, the city is um, one of the, there's a, a couple of dozen city. communities, I think, statewide. Yeah, yeah, but there's there was an ordinance that was passed <coughs> several years ago that uh, the Holyoke is a complete streets community. So whenever we do road work problem projects, uh, we have we approach it with a complete streets mindset, and complete streets just means uh, all facets, uh, all modes of transportation. So not just cars, but bicycles and pedestrians and handicap access, the soup to nuts. Mm -hmm. um, when we do our, our Chapter 90 projects, or even like the High and Maple Street project, uh, the city approaches it as a complete streets project. Um, but since we're a complete streets community, uh, there is funding available for complete streets projects. And this falls in line with a complete streets project because it, uh, it helps address the pedestrian mode of transportation.
So there, it's money that comes from the state. There's no uh, no match necessary for the money. So I have a follow-up question about, um, I mean, Hamden is, is its own conversation. We could talk about that for an hour. Um, and, and maybe we need to have uh, that conversation. I, I've started to have it with Representative Vega and, and um, trying to see what we can do with Hamden because it's uh, it's very problematic, as you know, in that section right there um, as folks are coming from South Hadley. Um, I had someone call me uh, a couple days ago about how when you're coming from South Hadley and you are at that intersection of Hamden and Linden and you take a right on Hamden to go up to that crosswalk we're just talking about, um, it says stop here on red, but then it also says you can turn right after stopping on red. And the traffic there is, you know, it, it's one way. Like there's no cars coming. Um, is is that something that, I mean, would I need to follow an, an order to have that looked at? I mean, it, it seems like the, the backup line of people stopping because they have to stop there to then turn is getting really out of control because we know that we're, it becomes a, a funnel um, for folks f coming from South Hadley. It, it seems kind of a contradiction of like stop here on red, red, but then you can turn after you stop on red, but there's no in, there's no oncoming traffic that people need to be stopping for. Does that make sense? It, it does make sense, um, but people people were treating it as a true slip lane, mm -hmm. as if there was no signal mm -hmm. at all. Uh, my understanding was that that signage was put in several years ago and the uh, the intent was to create a gap and to slow cars, people down to slow people down but also create a gap uh, so that if you're on Lincoln Street and you want to go down Hamden Street uh, there would be a, a sufficient gap in between cars to allow you to continue on Whereas without that, it was there was a continuous stream of cars coming up Hamden Street. Okay. So as far as you know, it's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be there. Okay. It, it was put there to try to alleviate uh, traffic backups happening at the stop sign at at Hamden and Lincoln Street. I'm talking about Linden. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. uh, but people people would be stopped at at Linden, or they'd come over the bridge. Mm -hmm. They would take a right, go up the hill. And then they would continue by taking a left at the mm -hmm. fork where Lincoln Street comes into Hampton Street. Yep. And uh, because of the, the stream of cars, if a car was at the stop sign on Lincoln Street and they wanted to go down the hill on Hampton Street, uh, they weren't able to, to make that maneuver. So it's either there's a, there's a accumulation of vehicles at the right after the bridge at the um, traffic at Lincoln yeah, Street correct or it's further up there's a backup on Lincoln okay. Street so it'll stay how it is I just want to report back to the person who called very upset I, about I think the city council actually filed an order to change it it was put that council. signage I was I trying to remember I don't think which it was one me. but it was, <laughs> was it you <laughs> no I said I don't think <laughs> no. it was me no it was definitely through the city council I was trying to remember who I might have been Brandon McGee. I was just curious because I, I mean, this person was calling it, me about. And it was a change that was done four, four or five years ago. Mm. Okay. Well, I've been here five years, so it must have been before mm. that. Maybe it was my predecessor. Anyways, that's yeah. fine. I was just curious. Thank you. So I'll let them know that it's because of the traffic flow. It's going to stay that way at this that's point. That's my understanding of why okay. the signage is there. All right. Thank you. So. Um, I'm okay saying that this order has been complied with since Mike has given us uh, sort of a timeline and we're hoping for before winter. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to take item 10 off the table. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Order item number 10 is order that from Nelson Roman and Jimmy Leahy, order that the DPW repair and completely replace the entire stretch of Main Street from Ingleside and Main through West Springfield Town Line. Temporary patches continue to reopen and are a cause of, of major pothole-related car damages. So the city doesn't own that stretch of road. It, it belongs to the state. And I think Paul 
taxpayer had sent some information. He did. There's a further order down. Um, I should have put it right after this one. Um, that talks about how much what what's, what's been the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. um, but we that that'll be quick. I can read that in fact. So we don't own that stretch of land. Correct. Motion that the order's been complied with since Second. there's nothing we can do at that level. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to take item 11 off the table. Uh, item number 11 is an order from Kevin Jordan and Peter Tallman. The city consider the acceptance of private ways in the city of Holyoke as public ways. So I, I think the intent of this is to increase the uh, mileage of city streets uh, within the city in order to have a larger chapter 90 allocation. Um, but there are certain streets that are private ways that the city does not want to take on ownership of just because of the condition of these streets that we would have to then spend more money uh, than it's worth to bring the the streets up into compliance. So uh, you're suggesting do it on a case by case basis? Correct, yeah. I think we've had this discussion before. Yeah. As I talked about Owen's place. <laughs> I know. That's funny you said that right yes. before this. Um, Motion that the order's been complied with. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to take item 12 off the table. Oh, sorry about that. All in favor? Aye. Uh, this is from Councillor Bartley. Order that the Hoyoke Police Department enforce traffic ordinances on Fenton Street area. Speeding is a major concern to the uh, neighborhood residents. Um, Should have had Chief Febo talk about well, this. Well, Chief, um, this was I complied think, okay. with because uh, it says the police department monitored the area and conducted 11 specific directed patrols. Only one issue was observed and the operator was given a warning. Okay. On his way out, he said it was complied with. Okay. So, motion that the order has been complied with. In favor? Aye. Um, so 13 we just talked about, but motion to take item 13 off the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 13 is by uh, Nelson Roman that the law department provide a dollar amount of all small claim settlements against the city of Hoyoke due to potholes on Main Street from Ingleside to Main through the West Springfield town line. And I will read Paul Payer's email quickly. Mm -hmm. There have been no paid settled claims arising from pothole or road defects on the stretch of Main Street running from West Springfield to the Ingleside Main Street Fork. This stretch of Main Street is actually a state road under Mass DOT jur jur jurisdiction. Please let me know if you have any other questions. Motion that it's been complied with. All right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we on? Motion to take item 14 off 14. the table. Second. Uh, order that the Parks and Rec Department and Commissioners provide the City Council with an update on the permanent status of the Hispanic Family Festival. I can take that one. Okay. Um, I was curious about the date. I didn't know what year it was pertaining to, 217 or 218, but... 218. Uh, they requested permits from Park and Rec, DPW. I think every City Department permitted the festival. I don't believe any department denied them a permit. So it went off without a hitch, right? No. But I don't think it was the city um, causing problems. No, I'm saying the permits. There was no problems with the permitting system. Uh, some were late uh, filing, but I do believe every permit that was requested was permitted, granted. Motion that the order has been complied with. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to take item 15 off the table. 
Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Number 15, order that the DPW Park and Rec provide an update on the tennis courts, mm -hmm. Mackenzie Fieldhouse and Pool Projects timelines, which the city has bonded for and received grants for. So we had touched a little bit on the, the tennis courts and the pool project uh, earlier. Um, and, and I will include all of that in, in the future correspondence. Uh, the McKenzie Field House, that's complete and, and done and in use. Okay. So the, uh, you know, the Roberts, Roberts Sports Complex project that had the football field and the track, uh, the baseball field, and now the field house, all of that work is complete. We do have some issues with the uh, the football field, but we're uh, working with the uh, vendor and subcontractors to come to a solution. Will you include that in the update? Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. motion that the order has been complied with. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to take item 16 off the table. Right. Item 16, order that the treasurer the auditor and treasurer confirmed that the $5,000 budgeted for the stage and the sound for the Hispanic Fe Family Festival was allocated to the festival. Um, and I can. Do you have any communication? I do. I have them? a communication okay. from uh, Sandy Smith, our treasurer, that the money was allocated and was spent. Okay. Can I just add a little bit to that? Of course. Oh, yeah. The city, through Park and Rec, has has turned over $5,000 for many, many years. Um, it's one line item, one line item in the parks budget for staging. It's not a line item that says staging for the family festival or staging for celebrate Holyoke. It's one line item, so that's just a little deceptive the way it's worded. So you have a line item in your budget, just for staging. Just for staging. Now staging at all festivals, or just this particular this particular festival? No, it's it's always been for the Good. Hispanic Family Festival and goes way back to when Celebrate Holyoke was originated in the 80s. Great. But it doesn't say staging for Correct. Festival X or Y. Correct. Yep. It's staging. It says mm -hmm. staging on the line item. Staging, yes. Okay. And it was allocated and dispersed. Yes. Okay. Motion that the item's been complied with. In that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And motion to take item 17 off the table. Order that, oh yeah, I, what did I do with that? Order that the city of Holyoke talk with the national firm of Scott and Scott in regards to joining on the class action lawsuit against pharmaceutical companies in uh, to recoup costs associated with the opioid crisis. The city of Holyoke has had seven overdoses in 2015, 11, and 2016. I had sent uh, a correspondence to Paul and the mayor, and I don't know. I may have to uh, respond to that tonight at our city council meeting. As I did send that, I sent that order to both the mayor and uh, Paul, and they said that they would uh, they would get back to me in writing, and I did not get anything yet. So, do you want to table it, or do you want to just want, what do they call that when it's when it's on the it's a uh, waiting? Um, we send it without um, a recommendation, and then you just pull it out of yeah, the committee so we, let's, jacket. Let's do that, just so we can keep it up. You know, just address it and be done with it. So, motion to forward to the full city council without a recommendation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Apologize. I appreciate it.